Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. I'm going to give people another moment or two to trickle in. So we'll get started here in just a second. Okay, everybody, I'm going to get started in just one minute. Um, if you could make sure that your microphone is on mute so we don't get feedback effects, that would be great. You should be able to see a uh, PowerPoint slides um, on your screen, which I'll be using in the presentation. And we're going to get started in just one minute. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Welcome to the webinar today for the Agino School of Business Psychology Department. I am Tom Moldridge. I'm the Psychology Department Chair and an Associate Professor here at Golden Gate. I've been here for about a decade um, and, you know, uh, should be able to answer most of your questions about our psychology programs. And if I can't, I will help you find someone who can. Um, so we're going to go through some informational material about the programs here, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. I also just want to apologize in advance. I have a cold, so, uh, you know, I may be a little sniffly or my voice may sound funny. I guess one of the upsides of Zoom, though, is that we're able to still meet, um, even though I'm a little under the weather. Uh, thankfully, it's not COVID, but, um, you know, just a little cold. Okay. So uh, what will we do today? Um, I'm going to start by talking about Golden Gate University and the Agino School of Business, which is the school that the Department of Psychology is housed within. We're going to talk about the requirements, the application, the demographics of our program, and then we'll move right into what I think most people are interested in, which is the two different psychology degrees that we offer, the counseling psychology degree and the industrial organizational psychology degree. We also have three different certificates, which I'll talk about brief, briefly. Um, we can talk about financing and scholarships, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions and answers at the end. Okay, so Golden Gate. We've been around for, I think it's 120 years now. So an institution that has a long history in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're a regionally accredited nonprofit university. We have over 68,000 alumni and uh, a large pool of faculty, most of whom are also practitioners in their respective fields. Uh, we operate on a trimester system, which means fall, spring, and summer. Each is 15 weeks, and you can start any of the programs that I'll be talking about today in any of the three trimesters. So you could start this fall, you could start in spring, you could start in summer, 
a lot of options that are open to you. Um, just a word about you know online and in-person study. So at least through the end of fall, all of our programs are going to be offered online because of the COVID situation, which as you probably have seen, seems to be getting a little worse again. Uh, in spring, we're still evaluating, you know, what the appropriate path will be. And of course, it's an evolving situation. Um, but I'm going to talk today uh, about the programs and how they're offered as if we were not in the midst of COVID, because I want you to have an understanding of the different formats of the program um, once the situation uh, gets under control again. Um, right now, everything's online. Um, everything will continue to be available online indefinitely. So forever, you'll be able to take any of these programs online, but they will both also return to an in-person format um, once things are safe again. So I'll talk more about that specifically with each program. So for four consecutive years, we've been ranked number one by Washington Monthly Magazine uh, as a school for adult learners. This is kind of like US News and World Reports, what they do for colleges. It's not something we apply for. They evaluate Golden Gate and other universities along many, many different metrics. And um, you know, of course we feel that it uh, represents our school well and really captures um, what we've been able to provide. If you attend Golden Gate, there are a lot of resources to support you. These are just a few of them. Um, all of these are available online right now. And once uh, we're you know, in a safer situation, they'll be available at our downtown San Francisco campus as well. Tech support, disability services, counseling, mentorships. We have a library that's also available online, staff in the library to facilitate your research. We have a, a wonderful career center that you're a member of for life. They provide workshops, internship searches, networking events, resume critiques, mock interviews, um, different services for putting yourself out there professionally online. Um, you know, I think it's really just a wonderful uh, resource. And of course it also serves us well um, in helping students navigate the internship process for both of the degrees. I'll, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes. So once we can get back on campus, this is a little snapshot of what campus actually looks like. Um, the fourth floor, which is where the Agino Business School is, was recently redone. And as you can see, everything's up to date, high tech, um, plenty of space for learning. Um, you know, personally, I, I think it's a really nice campus. It's right in the heart of downtown San Francisco, um, you know, accessible from the Embarcadero and Montgomery Street Barts, um, you know, pretty easy to get to uh, if you decide to take advantage of the in-person format. So let's talk about the two different degrees. We have a, a master's in counseling psychology and a master's in industrial organizational psychology. They're very different. Um, and I'll talk about each in turn, but first just a, a few demographics um, for the programs. So the average age of our student is 34, but that can be a little misleading because the, you know, the divergence is huge. So we have students that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, um, a lot of our students are, you know, working professionals, people who are returning for a second career, more mature students. Um, we really are an adult learning university and, and, and our programs are designed to be as flexible as possible to accommodate people with varying life circumstances. We have a pretty even male female split. Um, any of our programs you can attend part-time or full-time. So full-time is defined as three or more courses per trimester. Part-time is one or two. And you can switch back and forth. You know, you could take three courses in the fall, one course in the spring, four courses in the summer as your life circumstances change and evolve. So just to give you a sense of our faculty, um, you know, it's hard to do that in a webinar, but here are a couple of examples of wonderful people that teach for us. We have uh, senior adjunct professor, Kathy Langsom, who was recently given the California Association of Marriage and Family Therapy Distinguished Clinical Member Award. She teaches um, in our program and has for, boy, uh, 15 or 20 years. 
She teaches um, classes in community mental health, uh, family therapy. She edited a couple of books on community mental health after a long and distinguished um, career in the community mental health system. So, you know, we're really lucky that her experience can be something that we can benefit from. Another professor is John Ford, who teaches in our conflict resolution courses. He's a professor that everybody really loves. He recently wrote a book called Peace at Work, the HR Manager's Guide to Workplace Mediation. Um, a really fantastic guy who I think also has a lot to offer. So let's talk about the Counseling Psychology Program. So the Counseling Psychology Program is designed for people that are interested in pursuing licensure as an MFT or an LPCC or some other form of master's level psychotherapy license. Um, so this is always complicated to talk about because um, we have students from all over the country in our program um, and licensure at the master's level, it occurs uh, by state. So, so there's overlap between states, but um, some states have licenses that California doesn't have and vice versa. So um, if you are planning to get licensed in a state outside of California, I think it's always a good idea for us just to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation for you to let me know what states you're looking at so we can think about what the licenses are in that state, what their requirements are. Just want to make sure that you're going to you know, check all the appropriate boxes down the line. So if you're planning to pursue licensure outside of California, just reach out to me. I'll, I'll put my contact information in the chat box um, at the end of the webinar. So assuming uh, that you're pursuing the master's in counseling psychology degree, it's most likely that you're wanting to get licensed either as a marriage and family therapist, that's an MFT, or a licensed professional counselor, that's an LPC or LPCC. Our degree meets the requirements in California for both of those licenses, and it meets the requirements for one or both of those licenses in many other states. <clears throat> so, um, you know, again, we can always talk about licensure offline or in the Q&A period. So this is a degree that you can complete at your own pace. Um, Everything is live. So the classes, whether you attend in person or online, they're all live. You show up you know, at a certain time of the week for your class. You're in the classroom with the professors, with the other students. The reason it's live is because so much of the curriculum is based on learning skills and practicing skills. So it's much harder to do that effectively if you're not you know, in the room with other students. Um, classes are on the late afternoons and evenings on weekdays. Um, and that's, again, to make them maximally available to students who uh, are working professionals. So as part of the master's in counseling psychology, you do an internship. <clears throat> so you, you might know, I'll just take California as an example. Um, to get an MFT in California, you have to complete a degree. You have to do an internship as part of that degree. You earn a certain number of hours in that internship then you graduate from the degree and you have to do what's called an associateship, which is, is, is kind of like a second internship. And in your associateship, you earn the remainder of hours that are required for licensure, and then you take a license exam. So the internship that's part of our degree is something we help you with every step of the way. We have an internship coordinator on staff. We maintain connections with internships around the Bay Area and even around the country. We help you with your resumes, your cover letters, your interview skills. Um, we've never had a student who didn't get an internship. So it's something you get a tremendous amount of support around. And the internship is typically a year long, it takes about uh, 10 to 15 hours a week, a year long. You're actually seeing patients under supervision. You're in a supervision seminar here at Golden Gate. Many of those hours count towards your license. Um, you know, again, it's something you're getting a lot of support around. Um, as you make your way through our program. Um, people often have a lot of questions about the internship or the license. So, you know, just hold those for a minute and we'll definitely have time to talk about them at the end. So the counseling psychology degree, it's 60 units. It takes uh, about two to two and a half years to complete if you're doing it full time or a little faster than three courses a term. Um, it's a broad uh, curriculum that covers psychopathology, law and ethics, um, you know, how to, how to make use of psychological research, culture and diversity, 
all the different theoretical modalities that you'd encounter, um, psychodynamic therapy, family therapy, CBT, ACT, mindfulness, hypnosis, trauma. Um, you know, again, it's a broad-based curriculum. People often ask, um, you know, what is unique about our curriculum? And um, let, me, let me answer that. So we are a strategic partner with an organization called the Psychotherapy Action Network. And the Psychotherapy Action Network is an organization that promotes patient interests in mental health care. So it's really about um, providing mental health care that uh, you know, takes the needs, the real needs of the patient seriously. And you can, you can you know, contrast that to the financial incentives of managed care and insurance companies. Um, so you know, really advocating for um, giving patients the attention that they need, allowing them the time to unfold their stories, to feel understood, to feel heard, and for their problems to really be addressed at a deep, deep level. So I wouldn't say that our program is aligned with any theoretical modality per se. It's more aligned with a certain sensibility, um, which is captured by you know, what I just described with the Psychotherapy Action Network. If you're interested in learning more about the Psychotherapy Action Network, um, you can have a look at psian.org um, to see more about their mission and, and what they're about. So um, I'll talk about the Masters in Industrial Organizational Psychology now, but again, we can return to the counseling psychology degree in the Q&A um, portion of, of today's webinar. So uh, the master's in IO psychology, it's again, a degree that you can complete at your own pace, full time, it takes about a year and a half, maybe a little less. Um, it's offered in three different formats. So one of the formats is a live in-person format. So you're in class in real time, that's on hiatus right now because of COVID. Another format is uh, the live online format. So you're in class in real time with your students, with your professors, but you know, on Zoom. And then the third format is an asynchronous online format, which is, it doesn't have regular class meeting times. It's much more oriented towards self-study and you know, it moves week by week and there are lectures and you do interact with other students, but for the most part, it doesn't happen in real time. So, you know, it'll be recorded lectures. It'll be recorded interactions with other students. Um, bulletin boards, other modes of asynchronous learning. That can work really well for people that have fluctuating schedules, people that are in, you know, vastly different time zones. Um, so, you know, it's, again, it's a degree that's offered um, in a number of different formats um, and is very flexible. I think one of the things that's really cool about the IO Psych program at Golden Gate is that it's part of the Ageno Business School. And so what that means is that you can, uh, take classes because the IO Psych degree it has it has three electives. You can take classes, uh, you know, you can take your electives in IO Psych, but you can also take them anywhere else in the Agena Business School. So the MBA, the marketing program, data analytics, the Masters of Science of Leadership. There's um, you know really a lot to take advantage of and to craft a curriculum that meets your specific interests and your specific needs. That's also why we have the internship. So, you know, some people that come and do the IO psych degree, they're already well into their careers. They don't need um, an internship. They don't feel they would benefit from that. Others, you know, feel like um, it would be great for them to have that on their resume and to have that experience of, um, you know, taking all they've learned and applying it in practice. So again, we have an internship coordinator. We try to match people in a semester long internship where they can really take, you do it towards the end of your program. So it's it's a space where you can really take all you've learned <clears throat> and try to um, you know, apply it um, under supervision for a more complete learning experience. So the IO Psych degree, um, you know, I would recommend everybody who's interested in um, industrial organizational psychology, uh, check out the organization called SIOP, the Society for Industrial Organizational Psychology. That's the professional organization um, for IO psychology. Uh, you know, they don't, there, there's no license for IO psychology, but they do have a professional organization. Um, and, you know, it's exciting because both 
uh, well, IO psychology, it's, it's a discipline that's growing really quickly right now. If you look at the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, the demand for IO psychology is really, really high and our graduates are doing really, really well. Um, you know, I also should have said that about counseling actually, um, especially since COVID started, the demand for counselors has skyrocketed. Our enrollments have gone up. I mean, even California, I think, released a statement recently you know, that the need for mental health workers um, you know, far outstrips the availability. So both of these are just really promising disciplines to be entering right now. So IO, IO psychology, the curriculum, um, you know, you'll have classes in organizational behavior and development, executive coaching, uh, conflict resolution, group dynamics, um, diversity in organizational life. Um, you know, there's so much to this curriculum. For both of the degrees, I really recommend you check out the psychology department's webpage. You can see all the courses there. You can see syllabi for all of the courses. Um, you know, it's also possible to sit in on a class. So if you want to reach out to me um, by email, I could, I could arrange for you to sit in on the class to try to get a sense of, you know, what the vibe is here at the university. I think that can be a, a great way to get a better sense of our school. Um, and, and, you know, then the last thing I want to just briefly mention is that we do offer three different certificates, the conflict resolution certificate, um, which you could take as a standalone certificate, you also earn it automatically as part of the IO psych degree program because the conflict resolution courses are, are very much integrated into um, our IO psych curriculum. There's the counseling skills degree, which is, you know, a way to take some of the psychology courses, four or five or six of them, um, without fully committing to a degree. And then the IO psych certificate, it really serves that same purpose. If at any point, you know, if you take these certificates, you get the certificate and then you decide, yeah, I want to go get a master's degree. All those courses just roll over directly into the, into the respective master's degree. Um, so you're not, you know, at any disadvantage if you decide to transfer them in. People always want to know how our graduates do. And, you know, the truth is they're doing really, really well. So these are some of the companies that people have ended up at recently. We had a survey go out a couple of years ago um, that showed that 90% of our graduates were employed full time after graduation. I think it's higher now, honestly. Um, you know, there's so much demand for both of these disciplines right now. Um, our graduates are doing really well. And then internships, these are some of the places that our students have done internships recently in the IO psych program. Um, you know, some of these will be familiar names to you. Um, the counseling psychology degree, you know, there's over probably 60 or 70 internships just in the Bay Area. So there's so many. And um, we have relationships with most of them. It's easy for us to also bring in new sites. Um, you know, the, the community mental health system would collapse without the work of interns, to be quite frank. Um, so there's plenty of internships available in, um, in, in the counseling discipline. So if you decide to enroll at GGU, uh, it's 3270 per three unit course. You submit an application online. You will get an email today. Make sure to check your spam folder um, with a waiver code. So, you know, you can save some money there on the application, application fee. If you have a GPA less than 2.5 as an undergraduate, um, I just recommend reaching out to me, honestly, and we can have a conversation. We certainly understand that people's circumstances change. People who are going to graduate school are often in a very different place than they were at as undergraduates. Um, so, you know, we, we definitely uh, have that in mind um, in evaluating applications. There's federal state aid. Uh, GGU has some scholarships and grants, um, some employer reimbursement may be possible for some people. We have financial aid counselors who can talk you through all of this. Of course, it's, you know, it's pretty complicated, but um, I think you can get the kind of help you need to really streamline it and simple, simplify it and make it more workable for you. Um, lastly, we are a military-friendly Yellow Ribbon University, so if you are a veteran, um, there is the potential for pretty incredible uh, benefits just to know about that. Um, I think that's, that's pretty important. Uh, so now, you know, we have time for questions and answers. Let me type my information into the chat box. If you email me, I should be able to get back to you pretty quickly. Um, 
and uh, you can also uh, text me on my cell phone. Email is usually the, the quicker way to get a hold of me, um, quite honestly, because I'm, I'm usually in front of a computer these days. But, um, you know, feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to sit in on a class, if you have other questions after today's webinar, um, really any way that I can help, please, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, so, you know, now uh, time for questions. Probably the best way to do questions is to type them into the chat box. That way uh, we don't talk over each other um, with the audio. And then, you know, I'll read them and, and answer them um, for the group. Because I'm sure if you have a question, uh, somebody else has it as well. So, you know, please let me know how I can help. What questions can I answer? Okay, so some questions coming in, and I hid my chat box. Let me figure out how to get it back. Okay, um, what is the duration of the certificate courses? Great question. So the certificate courses, um, the counseling psychology certificate course, for example, is five courses long. Um, so you know that uh, means that you could complete it in, you know, one or two semesters if you took a full time load. Um, you know, duration, it, it always, it always depends on how many courses you take per term. And, and there's so much, um, you know, flexibility in, um, in how many courses you take in a given term, you know, you could, you could complete a certificate over two years if you just wanted to take one course per term. Um, but, you know, if you look at something like the certificate in IO psychology, um, you know, you could complete it in one term if you took four courses because it's only 12 units. So it really depends on, on how many courses you take at a time. So a uh, great question about what do you believe the differences are between IO psychology and human resources? And do I think psychology has a better career outlook? Um, so, uh, oh, yeah. Hold on, I think... Uh, yeah, I think somebody's got their audio on, and so we're getting some feed. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, differences between psychology and, and and human resources. So of course, there's a lot of overlap, and we have a human resources degree, and you can take human resources courses uh, as part of your IO psych degree. So that's totally available to you. Um, they are different disciplines, so. You know, I, I like to describe IO psychology as using the theoretical lenses of psychology and applying that to um, how organizational work, how organizations work. So a psychological perspective on organizational life. Um, human resources, you know, has some of that in it, but is also its own discipline with its own sort of set of, of theories and its own history as a discipline. So I think they're related, but different. I can give you my personal take on, on career outlooks. You know, other people may have different takes. My personal take is, yeah, I, I do actually think that IO psychology has a more promising um, career outlook at the moment. It's a fresher discipline, it's a newer discipline, and it's been around for you know only a few decades, whereas human resources has been around for much longer. I think people, especially in the Bay Area, are excited about the novelty of it and the way that it brings in new ways of thinking and conceptualizing what's happening in organizations. So, you know, I do actually think that um, IO psychology is kind of a hot topic at the moment. So for the counseling psychology program, are there any prerequisites? <clears throat> uh, no, there are not. So. Um, you know, I'm a psychologist. I majored in computer science and philosophy in grad school. 
um, it didn't do me any harm, really. Um, so much of what you learn in an undergrad psych degree, you know, it would be relevant. You would you would benefit from having it, but it's not in any way required. We really have designed a self-contained degree, and and you'll learn everything you need to know um, as part of the degree. So, is there an opportunity for internships in the certificate courses? Yeah, there is. Um, there's a, a caveat if you're talking about the counseling skills certificate. Um, in that if you did an internship in the counseling skills certificate and then decided to pursue the master's degree, you'd have to do another internship because for complex licensing reasons, the internship has to be part of the degree. But uh, for IO psychology, it's easy for us to bring in an internship. Um, yeah, it's totally possible. So can you attain more than 300 hours in your practicum? Yeah, it's a great question. So here's how that works. Our requirement is that you get 300 face-to-face -face clinical hours. Now, as, get, as part of getting those 300 hours, and face-to-face and -face hours means hours actually doing psychotherapy with a patient. So as you're getting those 300 face-to-face -face hours, you're actually earning many more hours than that that count towards your license. So you're getting hours of doing supervision, of doing documentation, of being in training, so you graduate with between 700 and 1,000 hours total. So that's the first point, is that you, you get more than 300 towards your license. You get actually more hours towards your license than you get from any other degree in California, as far as I'm aware. So our requirement is more rigorous because we want you to graduate with more hours completed. Now, you know, some people do decide to stay at their internship beyond three semesters. So they, they do, for example, a year and a half of an internship and maybe they get 1400 or 1500 hours instead of 700 or 1000, you know, so then they're half done when they graduate. That's also a possibility. So yes, there's, there's again, a lot of flexibility there. A question about, you know, what do we look for in a personal statement? Um, we look for, you know, self-awareness, uh, passion for the field, um, you know, an interest in helping other people, uh, motivation, you know, but I'd say the main thing is, you know, an interest in understanding yourself and, um, you know, learning about yourself and personal growth. I think that's really the hallmark of a good counselor. Uh, are the practicum hours included in the 60 course units? Yes, they are. So nine of the 60 units are the practicum. That is correct. What other questions do people have? Okay, so internship hours, um, is it flexible for evenings and weekends? So it depends on the internship site. So, you know, there are some internship sites that run on uh, evenings and weekends and some don't. So it really depends on the internship site. It's a common question because, you know, we definitely have students who, who work and they, they can't do, um, you know, daytime internship hours. So we, we try to help them locate an internship that has uh, evening and weekend availability. So a question about personal therapy. Thank you for answering that, uh, asking that because I, I should have mentioned that. So we have a, um, I don't know if I'd quite call it a requirement. Um, I guess it's a, it's a tentative requirement, a request that our students um, uh, get a certain number of hours of personal therapy as part of the psychology degree, concurrent with the psychology degree. And the reason for that is, you know, I think that if you're going to provide psychotherapy, it's really, really important to have had an experience of being a patient. You really want to know what it looks like from the other side, what it feels like from the other side. Presumably, it also, you know, has the potential to really help you understand yourself better and therefore work more effectively with your patients. So it is a requirement. 
but with a couple of caveats um, or with a single caveat, I guess, um, which is that it can be waived upon request um, for financial reasons. So we do provide uh, you know, a list of low fee therapists and organizations. We try to help you use your insurance. We, we try to come up with ways to make it affordable to you. But we also do recognize that for, for some students, it, it is an unmanageable financial burden. And so there's a waiver that can be requested there. Also for students that have had extensive personal therapy, we, we can waive the requirement. Um, you know, I, my personal recommendation would be, you know, the more, the better, but I do understand people have a lot of things going on in their lives. So it's not, you know, a rigid requirement, but, uh, it is strongly encouraged. Yeah, so is there a max number of sessions required? Um, we request that people complete 50 sessions. Um, but, you know, again, we also recognize that that won't be available to everyone. And, and so there is this waiver that's available. And, and yes, this, um, this requirement is <clears throat> just for the counseling psychology de degree, not for the IO psych degree. Um, when is the application deadline to apply for spring 2022? We don't have a firm deadline. Um, it's, it's a rolling application. Uh, Mike, do you want to, do you want to speak to that more? Yes. Um, once again, this is Mike with the admissions office. Um, like Tom said, we don't have a strict admissions deadline on when you should apply. The good news is we are already accepting spring 2022 applications so as soon as you are ready to apply, my suggestion is um, you submit the online application first to initialize the admissions process. And after you submit your application, um, you'll be followed up with one of our enrollment counselors who will um, take a look at your application and um, help you and walk you through the whole um, admissions process. So it depends on you. And, and by the way, after today, after you've attended today's webinar, you, uh, each of you will be receiving a follow-up email with the code to waive your $65 application fee. That is a waiver code to waive your $65 application fee. So wait for my follow-up email with the code waiver because that will save you $65 in the application. And after, um, after you receive an email, if you're ready to apply, just submit the application um, to jumpstart the process. And for some of you who are using a Gmail account in the email, there is a small chance that the follow-up email may fall into your spam or junk mail. So if by the end of today, you are still not receiving the follow-up email from us with the, call, uh, with the wafer call, um, feel free to send us an email. And also um, chances are, a very big chance are if you're using Gmail, it might fall into the junk mail. So check your junk mail or spam mail first to see if the follow email fell into there. And if you are not receiving the follow email still and you check your spam box, feel free to send us an email and uh, we'll be glad to uh, resend you the email or give you the code um, in another way.
other questions that any of you have? Um, <clears throat> I want to again just type my contact information into the chat box so that you have it. And you know, again, to say, I'd be really happy to hear from anyone. Um, you know, with questions, concerns. Uh, about GGU, about the profession, about your professional future. You know, even if you're not going to go to GGU, I'd be happy to talk with you. Um, you know, just don't don't at all hesitate to reach out to me. That's 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 what I'm here for. And um, you know, just to say, I think I feel uh, really good actually about the programs that we're offering. I think that they have a lot of richness to them. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I wouldn't it'd be you know totally out of integrity for me to be here if um, I didn't think that, but. You know, I really, I really do. I think there's a tremendous amount um, available to you and a lot of promise in both of these professions um, in the world right now. So a question, do we have a list of courses for the counseling psychology program on the website? Yes, we do. Let me try to get you the link for that. Um, so here's a link to the counseling psychology program website. If you just go down, you can click on curriculum. You'll see a list of all the courses. You can click on each course. And for most of them, you'll be able to see a syllabus. Um, you can also look at you know, the list of faculty. There's a, a lot of information on the webpage uh, for both degrees. And I really do recommend everybody check it out. So when does the fall program for certificate courses start? Uh, it starts in September. I think you still have time to uh, to apply for a certificate. Um, so you know that's that's still definitely an option if it's something that you're interested in. Okay, everybody. Well, it seems like we've gotten all the questions. Um, you know, so I'll bring it. I'll bring it to a close for today. I know everybody has a busy schedule. Um, you know, again, just just keep my email address, or you can Google me, and my email address will come up. And um, you know, I'd be more than happy to talk to any of you. I hope to see. Well, I hope to see all of you here at Golden Gate. Um, again, you'll get an email after this webinar with a fee waiver code and also a recording of the webinar if you want to revisit any of this information. So, you know, don't be a stranger. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. It's been, uh, you know, quite a year or a year and a half now that we've all been going through. So, you know, everybody stay safe, take care of yourselves and, um, you know, hope I hope our paths cross again. Okay, take care. Bye.